like to invite uh, the executive director to please present on the uh, challenges, issues, the opportunities and way forward for the paper industry. Thank you. Thanks, Jasvinder. Okay, um, I think we have to listen to presentation by Ra Mr. Rao, Laura, and also Jasvinder. We have shared the same views, uh, same insight. Just uh, let me uh, speak about the global paper industry as a whole. So, okay, next slide, please. Okay, uh, I'll be speaking about the current scenario, uh, IPC in brief, global paper production, and trade and paper, this one, uh, trade and price, this one also has been shared by Jasmine just now, and also I'll be, I'll be talking about issues and challenges, the COVID-19, inflation, disruption, in logistics, stringent regulations, and climate change, and also opportunities, IPC farmers app, research and development, smart farming, market expansion, and last uh, will be on the future strategic direction of the paper industry. Uh, which uh, I'll be speaking about the uh, paper price stabilization, traceability, for our strategic collaboration, and uh, more. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, the first one will be the I'll, I'll just uh, to make you familiar about our organization, uh, IPC in brief. Uh, just uh, for information, it was established in 1972 under the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific. UNSCAP and the HQ is based in Jakarta, Indonesia. So our main functions is uh, our research on technical and economic aspect of pepper production, exchange of information on programs and policies relating to pepper production, promotional programs, especially to increase the consumption of pepper, um, statistical and other information, activities and functions that may be considered desirable in the, trade, in the interest of the uh, world type of economy. So our key programs and activities are research and development, of course, and then our quality marketing, and then we have IPC awards, capacity building, crop survey, focus on paper price alert, and we also have annual IPC conference, uh, HOD meeting and whatnot, and then our publication will be a daily price alert. You know, we do SMS uh, price alert to all our um, subscribers and then we have weekly price bulletin as well, monthly market review, quarter report, annual report, statistical yearbook and uh, special issues and many more. At the moment, we have uh, five uh, IPC member countries uh, which are India, Indonesia, um, Malaysia, Malaysia, and then we have Sri Lanka and Vietnam, and also we have two associate members uh, currently, uh, which are Papua New Guinea and the Philippines. And what's new uh, with IPC, uh, this year marks our 50th anniversary of our establishment of the IPC, and also celebration of the International Paper Day on 16 April, our establishment date. And then we also have IPC Farmers App, and then crop report analytics, uh, rejection reports, direct country regulations. Right, next slide, please. So uh, just let, uh, just, uh, I'll give it, uh, more attention on the pepper industry for 2020 and 2021. Uh, this one also has been highlight, highlighted by Jasvinder just now in uh, her, his presentation. So for production in 2022, the total was uh, 582 to 31 uh, compared to 2021, uh, 531,580, which 9% uh, uh, decrease. And then we have consumption uh, for 2020, uh, 208,456. And then uh, uh, in 2021, we have uh, 215,654 tonnes. Uh, which is increase of uh, 3% for consumption. And for the excess and deficit, uh, uh, decrease of 15%, yeah? 373, uh, 865,000 in 2020, and 315,926 uh, in 2021. For pepper price, uh, to, from 2000 to 2021, the oversupply of pepper and low consumption of pepper have become the major reasons of the declining trend, if we can see from the, the, the graph. And uh, for global pe pepper production, uh, overall for 2021, the total production is uh, 535,713 uh, tons, uh, which is Vietnam was the highest, I mean, the, the largest producer of the uh, pepper, world pepper, uh, with 180,000 tons, followed by Brazil, Indonesia, India, Malaysia, China, 
and the last one would be all right for issues and challenges we have uh, this one has been mentioned also by uh, Mr. Rao and Jas Binder, sustainability of the paper industry due to COVID-19 pandemic, instability of the paper price, stringent rules and regulations for paper export, and of course, high cost of logistics. I'll be sharing the more issues and cha challenges in the next slides. Okay. So for global pepper production, the global pepper production in 2021 was uh, 537 KMT and and is expected to be similar or slightly reduced in 2022. So the highest uh, uh, producer was Vietnam and uh, followed by Brazil, Indonesia, uh, India, Malaysia and Sri Lanka. And 30% from world total production was 34% uh, and Brazil 18% and 15% respectively uh, by Indonesia. So next slide. For global paper export, the global paper export by origin countries in 2021 was 464 KMT. As you, if you can see from the, the, the chart, global paper export, uh, Vietnam still the highest, the largest paper pro exporter with 57% from world total export by origins, followed by Brazil and Indonesia with 20% and 8% respectively. For global paper price, the global paper price in 2021 was showing an increasing trend. If you can see from the, the chart, the composite price of paper as of December was uh, US dollar 4,569 per metric ton for black pepper and US dollar 6,363 per metric ton for white pepper. That's recording an staggering increase of 50% and 40% when compared to the same period in 2022. All right. Okay, for issues and challenges in the pepper industry, next slide, please. The number one, of course, the ongoing global COVID-19 pandemic. Travel is slowly being opened in the growing countries and it's expected that in later part of 2022, things will be will back to normal. Domestic lockdowns are easy in origins, allowing activities such as farm, extension, service, and etc. Country, uh, you can see from the slight countries growing pepper affected by COVID-19, India, 40 million, Brazil, 30 million, Indonesia, Vietnam, Sri, Sri Lanka, and Malaysia are in the vicinity of 5 million. The second uh, issues and challenges for the pepper industry, of course, pepper costs uh, push inflation and instability of pepper price. Cost of pepper farming increases significantly due to global inflation, high production versus low demand, and vice versa are impacting the, the whole global pepper price. And uh, of course, disruption in logistics, number three, port congestion, congestions continue, freights are up to six times as compared to the pre-COVID era, and one can expect marginal softening in 2022. And the next uh, issues and challenges for the pepper industry, stringent rules and regulations for pepper export. Uh, we have listened to Laura's presentation on the the new regulations for pepper trade to USA and then uh, pesticide regulations continue to tighten not only in the Europe but in the most uh, other regions such as USA, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, South Korea, Taiwan and uh, etc. And of course uh, climate change, we are talking about climate change right now, climate change right now causing special disruption even in normal monsoon, widening difference between low and high temperatures are expanding stress in pepper farming and of course, impacting, impacting pepper yield adversely. Right, next slide, please. For pepper industry opportunities, uh, we'll be talking about the uh, IPC Farmers App. We have actually established the IPC Farmers App for the last for the past two years. Uh, we would like to create awareness for pepper smallholders on the importance and the benefits of using the app in pepper family farming in order to produce premium quality of pepper. And of course, we, uh, the other opportunities are marketing and promotion to boost marketing and promotion of the pepper industry in order to create more demand, which will help to increase the pepper price. And also we'll be talking about smart farming, technical augmentation, vertical integration, and enhancing crop survey, enhancement of crop survey, crop survey activities being conducted by utilizing GPS or geotaking. 
based on geotagging. And of course, we have R&D and enhancements, development of known food products, for example, cosmetics, skincare, pharmaceutical, and more. And last but not least, pepper consumption with the increasing of world population and also protein consumption, pepper will become one of the key ingredients in daily life, including cooking uh, and more. Next, like this. And this uh, will be our way forward for uh, future strategic direction for the pepper industry. Uh, we'll be studying more on the price, uh, pepper price stabilization mechanism. mechanism. You know, we have to identify appropriate mechanism, including measures to restrict exports similar to the agreed export tonnage scheme uh, as implemented by the International uh, Tripartite Rubber Council member countries. And we also will help to identify minimum export price for a certain grade of pepper and for IR and farm expansion, uh, for instance, blockchain technology, IoT, to communicate, convince catapult pepper smallholders on pesticide management and risk management on the weather for pepper sustainability. And of course, uh, the three the, the, the three main pillars for sustainability of the pepper industry and also the creative economies, innovation, adaptation, and collaboration. So strategic collaboration is one of the key important key components of uh, the creative economy to enhance strategic collaboration with other international organizations related to pepper to bring pepper industry to greater heights. I mean, for post-COVID recovery strategy. And for data visibility, all IPC countries have been requested to improve visibility on the data at FarmGet and then also we will uh, uh, enhance more on IPC activities, the implementation of uh, quality marketing and R&D within the community through our a series of webinar and more. And of course, we'll be talking about traceability, key technology and paper supply chain that con connects to the two ends of producer and buyer and thus helps build trust at two levels between producer and producer pro procedure. Uh, and between retailer and consumer of the pepper industry. And uh, I totally agree with what Mr. Rao saying, no pandemic or pandemic, the things have to, to change, yeah? The next, um, yeah, uh, uh, I've mentioned this one earlier, since uh, IPC will be celebrating its 50th anniversary of its establishment, uh, we have... Uh, uh, few activities and programs uh, to be celebrated as well. And uh, just to inform you that we will be having a logo and photographic competition and we would like to invite all, uh, all of you to participate. And for more details, you can check uh, our website and please uh, support and participate to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the establishment of the IPC. All right, and uh, that's all. Thank you very much. And I think I'll, I'll be sharing the global market scenario production. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> yes, just render. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, uh, there is a uh, usually we do a panel discussion before yeah. adopting numbers because the industry has a different view, in my opinion, and there okay. are several questions coming up. So okay. uh, I would also invite Mr. Rao and if Ms. Laura, Laura, if they are there, you know, we, there are some questions. And then we could uh, email these uh, numbers uh, later to everyone. So there, were, uh, there was a question um, which was again related to chloropyrifos. And uh, as uh, Laura has already mentioned that as such, nothing has changed uh, with regards to black pepper. But there are still exporters who are asking these questions that how do we handle it? So one final comment, you know, from you, you know, will help them to, you know, come at peace because there has been too much of marketing on this aspect and too many emails uh, being said. Uh, and the fact remains that you've explained that, you know, nothing has changed. I mean, you were to comply before, you have to comply now. So, uh, you know, just a few comments, if you could, you know. Uh. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think that it would be extremely important for our industry to move away from the use of chlorpyrifos on black pepper. The entire 
world seems to be taking strides away from this chemical. The European Union has banned it, the United States has banned it, and many other nations around the world are banning the use of this chemical. So the time is now for us to work as an industry to stop using chlorpyrifos. As it relates to the ban in the United States, I do not suddenly expect to see the majority of black pepper being imported into the United States will be tested by our government and that there will be immediately a huge regulatory challenge with it. I think there is some of a leeway, some of a period of time for us to be able to come into compliance with the requirements but you can expect to hear from your customers. You can expect to hear from your customers that they want to understand what you're doing in your supply chain to make sure that it is free from chlorpyrifos. They may be requiring testing as well. So while I do not expect to see significant governmental enforcement in the short term, now is the time to start moving away from the use of the chemical and be prepared that you will receive questions from your customers about this. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so you've heard her that, you know, uh, the elephant is there in the room. It is uh, up to you, you know, you have to align. And I think the best way would be to talk more to your customers because customers uh, who are importing in the US are best placed uh, to tell you what has to be done. Uh, I understand there are going to be costs of testing, there are going to be costs of segregation, and it has to be a one-to-one uh, -one discussion for now. And in the long term, we have to move away from it. Uh, so uh, there was one question um, on how uh, or how is uh, Griffith or how can one um, help farmers or tell farmers to tackle with climate change? Because climate change is becoming a reality uh, today we see the uh, north of Vietnam uh, is practically witnessing a cold wave. Uh, today temperatures in Hanoi have dropped close to 7 degrees. Uh, where cassia is growing up north, temperatures are below 5 degrees. And you know, metabolism of our tropical trees stops below 10 degrees. A lot of stress is generated. On the other side, when you see higher temperatures when they go beyond 35 degree, 37 degree, uh, we see temperature stress also happening. Now, these are things which uh, farmers cannot uh, do an intervention themselves as such. Or are there any things that they can do uh, uh, which you know, can help them at least you know, uh, uh, take care that their crops are not affected by uh, climate change? Right. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, this question uh, I can answer uh, because it's a uh, question. The scope of this question is very large. So first of all, let's look at it uh, from a global point of view. Uh, in a typical, uh, uh, you know, uh, plate uh, of a meal, which is consumed. Uh, you know, uh, pepper or other spices, the contribution of those is very, very small. So the real uh, issue uh, comes uh, so far as climate change. Uh, it comes on other food products, mainly the meat, uh, especially beef, supposed to be the highest contributor. So the, the focus should be on those uh, industries, uh, so far as agricultural uh, raw materials are concerned. Uh, if you look at, if you arrange the emissions from the production of various food products, spices and herbs would be somewhere at the uh, lower end. And uh, big contributors, like I said, would be the meat industry, uh, followed by many other uh, production systems which are highly mechanized and which use uh, huge amounts of, uh, uh, you know, uh, chemicals and uh, uh, fertilizers. So far, uh, but that is from a global point of view. Uh, as, however, as uh, members of this industry, we also have a responsibility to see what, what best we can do in the uh, spices and herbs that we source. If you consider the supply chain of a typical spice, uh, you will find that agriculture 
contributes to about 40-45% of the overall emissions of greenhouse gases that is there in the supply chain. So if you take um, right from the farm all the way up to the consumer, uh, I, I, I do, I'm not saying the consumer, but at least the final processor, you will see that um, agriculture uh, contribution is about 40%. And among that 40%, uh, the uh, highest contributor, almost 80% of that 40-45% 40, 40, comes from application of nitrogenous fertilizers. So uh, as a company, we should uh, uh, support uh, farmers in reducing the application of nitrogenous fertilizers. So this is uh, from a very, very uh, tactical point of view. However, as a strategy, what we all need to do, first, first step in controlling this problem is measuring. And there are a number of protocols available which can be applied and number of good consultants who are experienced in this. And with the help of uh, their uh, expertise, uh, you, we can measure uh, the emissions at various stages of the supply chain, uh, like uh, growing, warehousing, manufacturing, shipments, in all these components, how much of greenhouse gas is being generated. And you, uh, you can follow the 80-20 rule, identify which components are high and then have plans uh, to tackle them. How do you tackle them? Uh, it, uh, because we are talking about agricultural emission, we have to uh, provide training to the farmer, provide incentives to the farmers for, uh, uh, you know, taking the positive steps, support them uh, wherever they need the credit for buying these, uh, uh, you know, uh, more eco-friendly inputs and so on and so forth. And uh, once this is done, I'm sure we will be able to uh, do our bit in this uh, uh, fight against uh, global warming right uh thank you sir uh quickly uh you know some small things which farmers can do because we are also very active into the uh, farming process and uh, we work with several companies such as yours also uh see when when it is getting very hot uh in the summer months essentially when we talk about sustainability we are saying that do intercropping don't use uh, cement poles or dead poles. Try to use live uh, poles or live trees. By doing that, you would be giving good shade to your pepper plants when the temperatures soar. When the temperature soar, if you are not having, uh, say, a natural uh, rain-fed area, try to use as much as irrigation as possible. Yes, uh, water costs, power costs, but by doing that additional expenditure, you would save your crop and save the yields uh, by a large uh, uh, factor. So you, you, you have to, we've seen in Vietnam in the years of drought, Vietnam is still able to produce because Vietnamese farmers actively do irrigation and put enough water in those dry months. So keep your uh, farms irrigated. Uh, in, in the high uh, rainfall months, I think drainage is very important. When the prices of pepper fall down, farmers do not look at gardening. They allow weeds to grow, that stops drainage. So along the sides of the trees, you know, it should be well drained. And on the or near the poles, allow the different cropping or weeds to grow, which keeps the temperature also down. So there are several small, small things that the farmers can do uh, to, you know, fight against climate change. Of course, they have to look at a model farm or what we should propagate that, okay, uh, we must try to bring farmers uh, and demonstrate to them model farms, which are part of sustainability activity and see how those farmers are able to keep their farms still doing well in the face of climate change also. Because we have seen in Vietnam, some farms are doing really excellent. They also face the same heat. They face the same erratic rainfall, but they are able to generate good yield because those farmers were active and they took certain steps. Now, the farmers who could not take steps, perhaps they were not informed or they did not know uh, what has to be done. So maybe information needs to be uh, propagated over there. So, and as Mr. Rao said, you know, we have to work together as an industry to look at fertilizer, to look at natural ingredients and whatever we can do as a small part for the pepper industry, you know, to help them to, uh, yes, it's a larger question. I mean, whatever happens, 
uh, one cannot uh, change or just the pepper industry cannot change climate change as such. It's going to be the uh, larger uh, base or uh, globally it has to uh, take place, but we can add uh, now a uh, small bit. Uh, there was a question uh, on um, uh, when we, uh, you know, uh, from Brazil that uh, there is enough and good demand uh, which is uh, rising. And uh, for this, uh, uh, do or does the panel think that Brazil is really placed well or positioned to capture that demand? So, uh, sir, would you like to throw some light or I'll take this? Yeah, like uh, you also said, uh, we find that Brazil uh, is a good, has done a lot of improvement in the way they process, uh, I mean, they grow the pepper. A uh, lot of work, a uh, lot of uh, increase in the acreage and a lot of good farmers uh, who have replaced their coffee plantations with pepper. Uh, however, the biggest uh, challenges we as a buyer, you know, because uh, almost 60% of what we consume is in the US and we have tried uh, in the past to source from uh, Brazil. So we, we face uh, uh, two problems. Uh, the first one is that um, the, the, there is no processing uh, capability in Brazil to meet the uh, global food safety and quality standards, including uh, not sufficient steam sterilization capacity uh, and so on and so forth, which makes it, it very difficult for a, a, you know, a company who is based in the consuming country to actually import directly from Brazil. Secondly, also the weather and the drying practices. Also, we feel that there is a little bit of risk in the way drying is done by using, you know, uh, the mechanical drying where they use the, uh, burn the nuts, you know, I think the Macedonia nuts or whatever nuts. We, we feel that there is a contamination of PAH as well as some kind of allergen also could get. Uh, so sun drying, sun dried Brazil pepper is very good. Uh, we don't have any risk. So these are the two challenges uh, which we face. If Brazil can address these uh, issues, uh, if the industry in Brazil can come together and with the cooperation of buyers, we, we would also be more than happy to contribute. Which, if these things are addressed, then definitely Brazil can uh, become uh, value-added exporters to the uh, developed country. All right. So uh, finally, there was a question on will uh, the pepper price increase? As I said in the beginning, you know, we cannot give guidance. Uh, uh, we have just explained to you the forces acting on uh, the prices of pepper. And uh, it is dynamic. Uh, also, we presented and some hints have been given that yes, the uh, pepper prices need to go slightly higher to allow, allow the farmers to start planting again. And uh, this may happen. This may happen this year. This may happen next year because if the prices rise, it helps the entire industry, uh, uh, or at least the growing industry, to make pepper farming slightly more sustainable. Of course, we do not want prices to be too low, which makes pepper farming unsustainable. We do not want pepper prices to be too high, which creates problem at the demand end because consumers, uh, well, consumers may not have a direct impact, you know. Uh, immediately but in the long term uh, the industry feels the impact and uh, once the industry starts feeling the impact then then they start changing recipes you know then they start looking at innovative ways that uh, can they reduce the pepper in the part of the recipe and replace it by some other spice or do other things uh, so on one on the other third front we are having innovative uses of uh, pepper uh, you know uh, pepper oil is helping people reduce smoking also uh, there are companies advertising pepper oil uh, which support them to uh, reduce their uh, smoking addiction. So there are very innovative uses of pepper coming up and demand is growing and uh, certainly uh, there is a bright future. Uh, what is missing is, uh, I believe, a, a lot of communication with the growing community. Uh, uh, when we do our surveys in Vietnam, we find 90% uh, of our farmers uh, are still, you know, uh, in a category where they could, they would struggle to get this information from an international level, and that is where the 
domestic organizations, whether it's VPA or uh, the exporters organization in Indonesia or the Brazilian exporters or individual companies who are working with the farmers, it becomes their responsibility to disseminate more information uh, to the farmers and train them. If, if all the uh, buyers of pepper and exporters come together and even you know decide that I want to train 100 or 200 farmers, I think we will be able to cover a significant uh, portion of the farming community uh, for the betterment of the entire uh, trade. So uh, you please have your own guesses on the pepper price and we cannot comment. Uh, there was another question on uh, what is the new normal. Uh, by this we essentially meant is that yes, we uh, are behind, uh, the pandemic is behind us in, in a larger sense. The new normal essentially means that we did not have such high freights before and now we have high freights and maybe they will reduce but they will still remain because shipping lines have now learned how to uh, you know uh, come together as a group and charge customers and for their benefit, uh, good for them. Uh, so I don't see personally, my view is that rates won't suddenly crash to uh, pre-pandemic levels. Inflation is here to stay, it is not going to suddenly change. Suddenly fertilizer, fertilizer prices are not going to fall by 50% uh, which they were before the pandemic. Suddenly labor costs are not going to reduce. Today it is, you know, farmers are struggling. Pepper berries are drying and becoming red, but they don't find labor to uh, uh, pluck the berries. So these are the challenges. Uh, which were uh, or which have come up after uh, last two years of uh, stress and the new normal also here is you know the consumer behavior is also changing e-commerce has got an enormous amount of um, uh, raise over here and as uh, people go on to internet more and they get more informed consumers become more uh, sharp and uh, they make industries to align so uh, that is the new normal we are talking about. Of course, uh, uh, these are the factors which have come into play in the last two years. That is what we meant by the theme. Uh, there is no uh, other question, just that, um, as I said in the beginning, uh, certain uh, attendees have raised this concern that the numbers perhaps that were shown were under uh, What I am again trying to explain is that uh, we are going to revisit those numbers. We are not publishing those numbers in a big way. We made a presentation. Uh, there was not enough time for doing a survey of, you know, because lockdowns were there, etc. We are going to talk to all the uh, government agencies again, and uh, we're going to revisit them. And then we will, you know, maybe uh, come out and publish it. So there is no hurry. Uh, and what we must look at is the difference. You know, it, it, that is what uh, we were trying to explain. And that is what matters the most because we are looking at a year to year. Base may change. If the base was changed, it was changed for the previous year also and changed for this year also. So we are, we are supposed to perhaps look at the difference that has happened uh, from number to number. So I, I, I see a lot of comments and uh, people saying that, you know, that perhaps uh, uh, what Vietnam is saying uh, 162,000 tons is um, way below. It would be somewhere close to 180, 190 or 200, whatever. But yes, I mean, uh, nothing stops uh, the industry to, uh, uh, you know, assume their own numbers or make their own estimates. Uh, one must understand if this, this year's number was reduced, so was last year's number reduced. So carry forward plus crop together, put together, there is enough availability is what they were hinting at. And um, so I would like to end uh, uh, the uh, panel discussion uh, to that. And I would like to hand over to uh, the director again uh, for a vote of thanks and uh, closing the session. Over to you, man. So sorry. <laughs> okay, um, just been there. I will just uh, show the. We will just uh, show the uh, global scenario just now. Market scenario. The of course the the data uh, is still not uh, confirmed yet because we will be receiving uh, changes from member countries still. But we will just uh, publish it just to inform all the participants. 
um, I just want to bring your attention to the uh, the, the numbers, figures highlighted, uh, which are the for IPC uh, countries for black uh, and white pepper. You can see from the figures of it. Uh, but well, this one is not actual yet. Uh, but we will discuss it later again uh, once we receive the, the numbers from the countries here. And on, on that note, uh, I would like to thank all the uh, participants and of course our distinguished uh, speakers uh, for having uh, spent time from your busy schedule to uh, join us for today's webinar. We hope that uh, you, you get information and insights from all the presentation just now and uh, thank you very much and I hope uh, we hope that we will be having a more series of webinar this year uh, inshallah and maybe in June and also September and with that uh, I thank uh, everyone and good night from uh, Jakarta and thank you very much thank you and good night everyone thank you thank you very much thank you very much Bye-bye. Take care and stay safe, yeah? Thank you. Thank you.